Hi everyone. Um, how are you? How's my students from my limited face-to-face -face classes and my modular instruction? Uh, currently on modular instruction students. So um, to my modular um, instruction students, I purposely did not give you the learning activity sheet for this week since our topic are mostly listening activities and of course with the use of technology. So I intended to give or uh, post your activities and the video lessons in your group chat and I guess that's why I did not give you the learning activity sheet. So I want you to be um, uh, to be vigilant and to be, uh, if not always, then most of the time, to be online uh, to make sure that you are updated with the activities that I will be sending you through your group chats. Alright, so our topic in this video is to interpret information through the use of technology. Of course, with the help of the different graphic organizers that I'm about to discuss to you in this video. Our competency is to judge the validity of the evidence listened to. Actually, there are two videos that I will be posting here. This video is all about the use of graphic organizer um, after uh, listening to the different listening uh, audio recording, you will input the information that you heard in a graphic organizer. And my second video is how to judge the steps on how to judge or evaluate the validity of the text or the evidence listened to. All right, so here I am showing a picture. Of course, it starts with receiving information through the use of your ears, which is one of the five senses that we are using. After receiving those information that you hear, uh, you will now um, uh, understand it. And then remember, if not uh, all of it, at least most of the information that you heard. And of course, after you remember those, you evaluate and that's the time that you will give your feedback. This is the proper um, sequence or the proper process of, of listening and uh, giving feedback. Okay, so before giving feedback, make sure that you follow the process in order for you to give an appropriate feedback or response to the speaker. Okay. I mentioned already the competency, which is the judge the validity of the evidence listened to. And our specific objective for this topic is to interpret the information that you listen to through the use of graphic organizers, which are table, diagram, chart, or graph. All right, so why are we talking about listening? Why am I giving you listening tasks? As you can observe at the beginning of this video, I showed you a picture that is the correct process of listening and giving feedback. So listening is very important in our everyday living since it is when we listen that we are able to give appropriate feedback or response. All right. When you listen, you understand what you listen to, you remember, and then you evaluate. That's the time that you can give appropriate or correct feedback to whoever that you are talking to. I've included the types of listening because there are two types of listening. We have the active listening and the passive listening. What are the difference between the two? When you are active listening, you are fully focused 
you understand the message of what is being said or listened to. While if you are just a passive listener, you just hear someone or something without paying full attention. Okay, when you are an active listening, you can um, interact, you can answer, you can provide um, appropriate response or um, feedback. But if you just you are just a passive listener, it is possible that you cannot provide appropriate feedback to whoever you are talking to. So uh, much better that if you are listening, you do active listening that is also to avoid conflict in the future because um, you are a passive listener communication is a vital element of our daily lives regardless of the distance we have we can still interact with each other with the latest technology we have today it allows us to put ourselves into the open world and express our thoughts and feelings to others. We can transfer our messages very fast, virtually travel or go to other places and connect to people around the globe. Technology is becoming more advanced and vastly contributes in many ways of quenching our thirst of connecting to the world. This lesson allows you to discover the extent to which you can connect to other people with different personalities and needs. In order for you to understand and be able to answer the following activities and questions, you have to listen very carefully in order to interpret the data you have heard using graphic organizers or visual representations. In order for you to understand and interpret easily the information or the message of the listening text, you will use nonverbal illustrations. These nonverbal illustrations are called graphic organizers or visual representations. A graphic organizer is a visual and graphic display that depicts the relationship between facts, terms, and or ideas within a learning task. It helps learners organize their thoughts and ideas, sequence events, and interpret information or message from the text. Some examples of these are tables, charts, or graphs and diagrams. Graphic organizer of facts, information, or details from the listening text provides you with opportunities to learn faster and better. All right, since we're talking about graphic organizers, I provided you, I provided you four commonly used graphic organizers. Let's start with a table or grid. A table or grid is a systematic arrangement or grouping of related concepts or words in rows and columns that readily show their relationship and value. So when are we going to use table or grid? When you are arranging or grouping related concepts or words in columns or in rows that shows their relationship and values. I have there an example of a table. Table is one of the commonly used graphic organizer. Next, is a chart or a flowchart. It is a graphical representation of a process. It shows steps in sequential order, presenting the workflow or process by connecting them with arrows. All right, so when are we going to use chart or flowchart? When you are showing a process, steps, a sequence, or a workflow. You will be using arrows in your chart or your flow chart in order to uh, convey the message that there is the beginning, the next, and the last part of your flow chart. The third one is a graph. A graph has three uh, types. We have the line graph, which uses lines and a bar graph which uses bars and a pie which is a circle divided in two. 
uh, uh, into several pies, right? So just like a pizza pie. Okay, so a graph can be defined as a pictorial representation or a diagram that represents data or values in an organized manner. It may be line graph, bar graph, or pie graph. So we are using pie graph when we are into data or values, numbers. So this is most commonly used, okay, to make your information more um, accurate, readable, and effective. Last one is the Venn diagram. This Venn diagram is commonly used in our English subject, okay? So a Venn diagram is an illustration that uses circles to show the relationship among things or finite group of things. Venn diagram helps to visually represent the similarities and differences between two concepts. Alright, so this is most commonly used in our subject. Why? Because um, whenever you are asked to read a certain story and you are asked to identify the differences and the similarities mostly we are using or you are asked to use a venn diagram to make it more easier and of course to show creativity also video games have been blamed for problems ranging from thumb injuries to low test scores Detractors of the games complain that they are noisy and flashy, that they involve players so completely that other activities are neglected, and that they don't offer physical exercise. These critics, however, are overlooking the benefits. Video games help us sharpen the skills that are useful in more serious activities. First, these noisy, flashy games Train us to ignore distractions. We must keep our minds on what we are doing despite the blinking lights and mechanical noises. This ability helps us when we need to work or concentrate despite the honking horns, warning sirens, humming refrigerators, and flickering neon signs that form the background of our lives. In this loud and lively age, we need all the practice we can get in blocking out distractions. Second, as we play, we learn to concentrate on and deal with a number of different elements. If we don't, we lose right away. Once these skills is developed, it is likely to spill over into more important activities like studying or putting together projects. In other words, Video games improve our ability to process information. Finally, video games give us one essential kind of physical exercise. We get practice in coordinating what our eyes see with what our hands do. This form of coordination makes some academic skills, such as copying from the chalkboard or taking notes for reports, much easier. Of course, good hand or eye coordination is also vital for important mechanical skills like driving. Playing video games, therefore, is an enjoyable form of self-improvement. It's wiser to spend a few quarters developing concentration and coordination than buying a bubble gum. Okay, so we are now on the assessment part of the video lesson. Prior to this posting of the video lesson, I already posted in your respective group chats the audio recording of the text on saving, right? So some of you, especially those who are scheduled on face-to-face -face classes this week, I provided you with the answer sheet. So for those who have the answer sheet, all you have to do after listening to the audio, write your answers on the answer sheet. But for those who are currently on modular instruction this week, you can write your answers in your English notebook. Yes, please provide English notebook just ex exclusive for the subject only. Okay, so after listening, um, uh, 
the problems or the disadvantages of playing video games are, are already given on the table that is on the first column of the table what you will do is just complete the table by providing the benefits or the advantages of playing video games on the right side or the second column of the table it is a uh, uh, there are only three benefits or advantages that is asked okay okay here on the second activity which is you are to um, fill in the information using this flowchart again you will be using the same audio recording which is entitled on saving you are to organize or arrange the details found in the text by using the flowchart of course it starts with the main topic or the main idea and the three drops should be the details or the explanation uh, mentioned on the audio recording. And the last part is the concluding sentence. Uh, every information can be found on the audio recording. You can download it so you can listen to it repeatedly for you to be able to answer correctly the activities. All right, so if you have questions, um, feel free to message me so that I can assist you, okay? Especially those who are on distance learning for this week.